heard some news that you might have moved away from Clark recently and even further than Cody. So I just hope you get that truck gassed up and ready to go because it, it's going to take you a little longer to get to the Irma where I'll, where I'll see you every Friday still. Uh, still living on the South Fork. Every time I pass your new place, I always wave to you and I'll continue to say hi every morning and have a good night every night, which I'm sure you will. I think you'll remember the first time we met, maybe four years ago, uh, I told you I was a police officer and you told me that you were also a deputy at one time. So we always shared that bond since then and it was always special for me. And I'll always consider you my brother. And I can't wait to see you the next time, or we'll be looking at some cool sites out on South Fork. And I'm sure you're upstairs working for the big guy and making some good guns for him. And I bet the range up there is pretty sweet too. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks. See that coming. So the one time when I go up to sunlight. And then they sound like bridge, and my kids and us were looking over the, over the bridge. And pretty soon I can hear these bones hitting off the edge. thought, what the heck's going on? And I finally find out where it is, and there's two guys pulling, lifting boulders up. Two guys it takes to lift them, throwing them into the river, over the edge of that uh, canyon. And I started hollering at him, told him, I said, if you're going to fill that damn canyon up, it's going to take you forever. And I looked up and your dad told, hey, Ross, how are you? And I walk over there and it's your grandpa and your dad throwing boulders. And I'm sure there's a law against that, but by God, they were doing that. He always greeted me with a hug and he always gave me a big old kiss and always a big smile on his face. Oh, where have you been? It's so good to see you. And he said, um, he would on occasion show up at the door, come on in, have a Pendleton or two or three. And we would just talk about life in general. And he was a complete joy. He was so proud of his boys as well. He should be. And, um, very much a man of God. And I'm so grateful for that as well. That dings in him. You can't hit him with a pistol. If you if you're having trouble hitting him, you may have to get you a big tall bottle of group tightener <laughs> and sighting fluid. <laughs> but you can hit him. It can't be done. So. Coming from a gun show in Llano, Texas, headed back to Cody. I said, "What do you do for a living?" He said, "I'm a custom revolver smith." And I thought to myself, "That's pretty specific language." He didn't say gunsmith. He said revolver smith. And I thought, you know, I only know a one guy that I've read a lot of magazine articles about that could be a custom revolver smith from Cody, Wyoming. And I looked at him and I said, that's okay. I don't need to see your driver's license. You're John Linebaugh from Cody, Wyoming. And he about jumped out of his skin. He goes, how in the world do you know that? I said, I'm a gun guy, John. Uh, it's just very uh, genuine, very genuine person. And, uh, you know, I was thinking, in my view, if you were going to, like, build a uh, Mount Rushmore kind of monument here in Cody to, to people next to Bill Cody, it would be John Monball, Bob Edgar, and Harry Jackson, and uh, James Bama, and those guys. So he was just such an iconic one of a kind figure that will always always live his, his memory and his his spirit and his uh, his fame you know, will always be alive especially with people that know his friends um, he welcomed me to Cody with open arms he said you belong here he's very kind and um, I, I'm a morning person so I go out and get coffee and when I go by the urban if I see his truck I'll stop and it's been just recently like in the last couple of months I'll go in there and he's not with a client and um, we just sit and talk he's eating his breakfast and I'm drinking my coffee and he has the most wonderful stories 
about Cody and his experiences over the years. And I wished I would have been recording them because you could write a book with the knowledge that he has in his head. We did a lot of shooting together. We did a lot of laughs, uh, meeting at the Irma, and sometimes coffee. Could be coffee and pie. Could be a buffalo burger. Uh, but anyway, uh, over time, uh, I started going to... Uh, I'm John Linebaugh from Cody, Wyoming, owner of Linebaugh Custom 6 Guns. This is where some of the largest revolvers were ever built. This is where it all started. This is where we test and shoot every day.